everyone, I'm Lindsay Wolf. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about lupus. Um, before we get started with the presentation, I wanted to introduce a, introduce everyone to a very special friend of mine. Um, so this is Symptom Sally. Okay. So Symptom Sally just came back from the doctor and she was diagnosed with lupus. Um, she's experiencing very common symptoms of someone that has lupus. She has very stiff joints, as you can see. Um, she's displaying a butterfly rash on her nose and her cheeks. She is having lots of hair loss, which is not good. And she has a temperature of 100.7, which is a fever that is unexplainable. Um, even though she looks very happy, she actually is in a lot of pain. She doesn't feel good. She um, is tired a lot of the time. And she now knows why, because her doctor let her know that she has lupus. So this is Sally. I would go into the physician's office and say, would tell them, you know, I'm tired, I have no energy, um, I have these sores that are coming up that are draining, or I would have hair loss, I had this butterfly rash, and they would run blood tests and nothing was coming back specific. It turns out Lenike had lupus, an autoimmune disorder that affects over a quarter of a million people in the United States. The pain was incredible. I mean, it was unbelievable. I, was, I would be doubled over in pain from my abdomen, from, from the lupus. It's like your body is allergic to itself. Now what that means is your normal tissue is being attacked by your normal immune system. Lupus is difficult to diagnose because it can develop gradually over many years and attack any organ in the body, including the skin. It took five hospitalizations and a full-blown attack called a flare before Lenike was finally diagnosed. And when you have a flare, it's difficult. You hurt, but you don't look bad. And that's the frustration with the disease. And for me, it cost me my marriage. And I'm, I'm not the only person this happens to. The people with autoimmune diseases, um, this, is, this is a casualty of, of having the disease. A little bit about lupus is that it's a systemic autoimmune disease. This means that the immune system attacks the body's tissues and organs, and this leads to inflammation within the body, which is where lupus patients experience pain and fatigue and many other symptoms. This disorder can attack the kidneys, the lungs, the skin, brain, the digestive system, and many other systems. These symptoms and people that experience lupus do not experience it constantly. Usually these, the pain that is associated with lupus comes in spurts that are known as flares. The etiology of lupus is unknown, but uh, it is believed to be a combination of environment, genetics, infections, medications, hormonal agents, and sunlight exposure. Back to the signs and symptoms of lupus. Again, we see the butterfly rash that this picture is actually showing. You can see the rash on the nose and the cheeks. There's fevers, there's inflammation, joint stiffness and pain, fatigue, headaches, hair loss, and chest pain. And then the pathophysiology that's associated with lupus impacts the brain, which causes headaches, tingling, and numbness the heart, which causes inflammation of the heart muscle and valve tissues. There's impacts on the skin, which include sores from the sun and inside and around the mouth. With the lungs, um, we see, this is where you see the chest pain. There's lots of fluid, fluid buildup on the lungs, which causes um, people that have a hard time breathing. The kidneys is usually associated with leg swelling. The circulation within the body 
usually there's blood clots in the veins and in the digestive system is where we see the nausea and abdominal pain within people that have lupus. Prevalence and incidence of lupus, it's been mentioned that it is more common in women, especially African American women. The prevalence is 100 out of 100,000 people approximately, and incidence is approximately 5 out of every 100,000 people. The survival rate is very high for people that are diagnosed with lupus. It's about greater than 95%. And the typical age of diagnosis and onset of lupus is between the ages of 15 to 45 years old. So the related populations, again, more common in females. And another related population has to do with ethnicities. The most common ethnicities that lupus impacts are African Americans, Hispanics, and Asian ethnicities. There are various related disorders and risk factors that are associated with lupus. Some of this, the disorders that may occur include hemolytic anemia, thyroiditis, and antiphospholipid syndrome. And some other ones that we can see in the bottom right hand corner include organic brain syndrome, fibromyalgia, CNS vasculitis, hypertension, and headaches. There are four main types of lupus. There's cutaneous lupus, drug-induced lupus, neonatal lupus, and systemic lupus erythematosus. The systemic lupus erythematosus is the most common type of lupus that is seen, and it's the one that I'm mainly talking about today. And then some risk factors that are included with lupus include um, Sex, female, like we've said before, are most common. The ethnicity of a person and the family history of lupus. It is found that people that have lupus, generally they have parents or relatives that also have had lupus. Along with lupus, there are a variety of medical management and interventions that people can take. So the medications are generally immunosuppressive drugs that um, help to inhibit the immune system from attacking the organs and the tissues within the body. Um, these medications may be hydroxychloroquine and corticosteroids. Other interventions that may be OT or other non-drug management of lupus are cog cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, this teaches relaxation techni techniques to people, um, and it really it reconstructs thoughts of how to deal and go about your day, dealing with lupus and the flares that th may occur, and just trying to have a little bit better of an outlook on it. Another study that has been found to improve symptoms of lupus, especially with joint pain, and fatigue are aerobic exercise. They found that 12 weeks, uh, three days a week, 20 minutes a day of aerobic exercise increased or decreased fatigue and increased the satisfaction of occupations of a person that was experiencing lupus. And then the other intervention that um, researchers found that was very helpful to people with lupus was the disease education. This helped people to learn how lupus impacts their body and showed them what type of lifestyle or changes to their lifestyle that they could make to help manage the symptoms and everyday life of lupus. Um, there are some precautions that should be taken with people that have been diagnosed with lupus. People with lupus are very, very susceptible to getting sunburn, so they need to be much more cautious being outside, exposed to the sun. They also should be more cautious in social gatherings due to the immune deficiencies, so um, their immune system is not working correctly, so they are more susceptible to getting sick. And then also, the joint issues and fatigue and the weakness may reduce the activities that they can um, participate in 
and decrease their lifestyle or occupational satisfaction. All right, so for my game, <clears throat> we are going to be doing Symptom Sally Trivia. We've got Dad, Mom, Javen, and Sally, of course. All right, so what's going to happen is I'm going to ask a question. Um, whoever grabs the thing in the middle, they get to answer the question, and whoever ends up with the most symptoms at the end wins. Lupus is an autoimmune disorder. What does this mean? Uh, it means that your immune system gets all confused and attacks itself. Good job. What is a flare? Mom. When you have an episode where symptoms um, appear at a certain time. Good job. Okay. Um, name two likely causes of lupus. Sunlight and what was the other one? Um, environment. Yep, good job. There are three common symptoms of lupus. Fatigue, headache, butterfly rash. Good job. All right. Is the survival rate for lupus high or low? Oh, high. Good job. Well, Next question. Which sex is lupus more common in? <laughs> Mom. Women. Women. You're right. What is the most common type of lupus? SLE and it's systematic lupus. And an E word that I don't remember. <laughs> Erythematosis. Erythema, that's what I said. Yeah. All right. Oh my goodness, we're out of symptoms, but... Okay, it looks like at the end here, Mom is our winner with the most symptoms. Do I win Sally? You win Sally. Yeah. 